is back, and so is NFL Primetime again on ESPN+. Plus. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Berman. So glad you could be with us. We love doing the show. We love showing you football. Rolling Buffalo. Big expectations this year in western New York for Josh Allen of the Bills as they host the New York Jets. Allen, we know he can run, but sometimes, uh-oh, Bradley McDougal falls on the fumble, recovers it, Jets take over, but here we go, Josh, and he can waltz in here, Booker. Offensive coordinator Brian Daybold, a great design play. It's a walk-in, and let the big man spike it. Give him some love. Yeah, Ryan Bates, 71, circling one wagon. Now, Allen <laughs> makes Marcus May miss and picks up a nice gain, and they're very high on their rookie running back, Zach Moss. And give Allen time like this. Where is he? There you go. 14 0. Buffalo. Second quarter, same score. Up the gut. On fourth and one. We've seen him do that. Design run. Josh Allen doesn't get into the game until he gets hit. They're getting him hit early, boom. Third and 10. Stephon Diggs, welcome to Buffalo. He caught eight balls as a first time Buffalo Bill. Allen, screen. John Brown, they, what do you mean? The Bills have a lot of weapons? Wait a, a minute. <laughs> this is Buffalo. 21 0 Buffalo. Le'Veon Bell runs a route. AJ Klein pushes him on his way down. Bell, Payne grabbing Hammy. Be a lot of that, you would think, in September, huh? No training camp, but it was good to see Le'Veon Bell split out using him as a pass catcher. He didn't return to the game. Meanwhile, the Jets trying to hang in. Sam Darnold, Jamison, Manhattan, Clam, Crowder. Bowls into the end zone, and it's 21 to 10. Maybe the only thing the Bills D did wrong all day, a lot of missed tackles. Expect to see that during the first part of the season with no training camp. The Jets near midfield, but the Bills defense is going to be their calling card. Chris Herndon screen, but it's stripped. Jordan Poirier, one of their fine safeties, makes the play, and the Bills recover. Milano had an interception. And Buffalo circling one wagon at a time. Don't get ahead of yourselves, Bills. But a nice start, a division win, 27-17, 33 of 46 for Allen throwing the ball. Well, has a chance to go 2-0? Say it. Circling the wagons. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at look at my, my, my producer, Chong, giving me the circling the wagons graphic. But Josh Allen, company, go to Miami. They beat the Jets. Could they beat the Dolphins? They had lightning delay. They have power outages. So we have to pick it up 20 to 17. And Allen to Stephon Diggs. Huge throwing day for Josh Allen. 47 yards. Allen to the slot receiver, Cole Beasley. And this could be an 18-yard pickup. It's amazing when you get a number one receiver like Diggs, how it puts everyone in their position. Now Beasley can operate in the slot. And it puts fellows like Gabe Davis open. And Allen can move. You know that? It's a touch on that. Tell you what. He's, they're giving him confidence. Throw it. Great throw, but an even Have better catch. catch. Look yep. at that catch. Keeping the ball off the ground. Quarterback always throw it to you when you can make catches like that. So, the Bills retake the lead at 24 to 20. Allen, you would think they'd nurse it? No. The John Brown, ooh, almost intercepted miscommunications. But this is, wait a minute. These are the Bills <laughs> yes. firing with a four-point lead? Watch this. And there were several of these late, Booger, right? Allen to Brown for the touchdown. This is how the Bills are going to put games away, bombs away, Buffalo. I mean, it's not Jim Kelly. Come on. 31 to 20. It's awesome. Two and a half to go. Former Bill, former everybody quarterback, Fitzy. Never out of it with Fitzy and Mike Gazicki. Picks up 19. Miami, down 11. Still in it. Fitzy. Gazicki. Touchdown. Down five, 31 26. Miami, of course, going to Fitzy. Preston Williams, we have a field goal game. Mm. And Jason Sanders is going to try to get the ball back in the onside kick, and it's Micah Hyde. Well, that one, you can run. He wouldn't want to hide, and they got it. <laughs> Hard to get onside kicks. That, that Dallas one was, was odd, but I mean, well, unbelievably done. The Bills hold on to beat Miami. They are 2-0. And Josh Allen, first Bill since some guy named Kelly in 1989. Mm. Mm. Throw for 400. Mm. The Bills are rewarding Josh Allen. They're giving him confidence, and he's rewarding him. Yeah, there's plays every now and then, but 
what is he, 300 week one, 400 week two. Josh Allen completing to everybody, throwing great. Of course, he runs, but his most impressive pass in Miami was after the game. Mom and dad came in California. They go to all those games. Hey, mom and dad, catch this. By the way, it was complete. It's that, that. He's a quarterback that throws to all the receivers. It's good to see his maturity both on the field and off the field involving his parents in the game. Yeah, that, that, it's fun. Yeah. Buffalo's 2-0. The 2020 Patriot way with the chapeau. Now, two <laughs> undefeated Rams, Bills, Josh Allen, Jared Goff. What a show this was in Western New York. Early on, a laugher. What do the good teams do late in the first half? They not only have the ball, they score. That's Josh Allen to Tyler Croft for a touchdown, 21-3 at the half. Not really sure what Jalen Ramsey was doing right there, but Stephon Diggs ran a nice route, really good throw, even better route by Stephon Diggs. Well, I was, I was looking for another play. I didn't get it. You're going to have to trust me. The Bills were up 28-3. Then, this was interesting. John Johnson rips it out of Croft's hands. He had a couple of touchdowns, and they call it, well, Ty not going to the, to the uh, runner. I thought Ty went to the runner. Just then, Johnson did a nice job on the way down securing the football. So, it was 28-3. to One-time Buffalo Bill Robert Woods, a touchdown. Now it's 28-10. Now it's 28-17. So, Buffalo had their way for two and a half quarters, and I mean had their way. Now Goff. Rams heating up, completed a third and 11, third and eight, Goff, Woods, another third down conversion. Rams, red zone, Goff. Uh-oh. Mm -mm. Now, now this, is, this is here we go with Woods, so we didn't take the other play out either. Okay, needless to say, I watched this game, now you're gonna watch it with me. Who knows what's coming next? Goff, that's Cooper Cup. Well, yeah. Two point conversion, 28 to 25. Really nice route by Cooper Cup beating to Davis White. Midway through the fourth. Uh oh, Josh Allen. How about Aaron Donald on this play? What more could you possibly do? Other than Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Donald is the best football player in the National Football League. Watch him beat the guard and watch him just ragdoll a 240 pound quarterback. Aaron Donald could be the MVP, baby. Well, so now, turnover. So this was 28-3 and a laugher, and now all of a sudden, when the Rams, Daryl Henderson Jr. in the end zone, they're up 32 to 28. They were down 25 points, under three and a half to go. What can Josh Allen do to get them going? How about third and 22? The Cole Beasley, third and 22, and it's a first down. Wow. A few minutes later, fourth and nine. Pass interference, close. Darius yeah. Williams, the ball was in. What do you think? Yeah, by the letter of the law, I understand the flag, but both guys are pushing each other. This is a ticky-tack call, and it ultimately decided this game. Well, it did because Allen, with seconds to go, to Croft for the second time in the game, and the Bills up 28-3, so the Rams come all the way back to take the lead. But in the end, it was Buffalo. The Buffalo Bills, 3-0 again. They did it in 91 and 92 back-to-back -back years. That's a long time ago. Those are Super Bowl years. Again, Josh Allen threw for over 300 yards in this game. Goff threw for over 300 yards in this game. 850 yards of offense in this game. And afterwards, man, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Oh, well, one, I'm going to need a nice bath tomorrow. Uh, that's a really good Rams defense that we just played. They got after us um, there in the third and fourth quarter. You know, going up 28 to three um, as a team, we got to be better. We got to make sure that we're keeping our foot on the pedal and we got to put that game away. Um, you know, I'm very happy with how resilient this team was, but I'm also a little little mad um, at myself for allowing us to kind of dip right there and not, um, you know, executing like we should have. I put the ball in harm's way too often. Um, but at the end of the day, we, we got a victory, and that, that's all I care about. You know, it was a, it was wild. We we couldn't really show you enough. We should have, but it was. For the Bills, for two and a half quarters, and we saw this. Now, admittedly, they played Jets in Miami before. Right, Rams, right. give them credit, man. They That impressed me that they were that far down and were under control. Buffalo is, there's a long leash, and understandably so. And they are trusting Josh Allen to run plays and throw balls. He reminds me of first-year starter, second-year pro a little bit. Brett Favre mm. and Green Bay were, yes! Uh, oh, no. Uh, yes! <laughs> 
it almost got him in trouble, except he pulled him out at the end. Without a doubt. And, and the Buffalo Bills and the Rams, both are really good football teams. And so we saw some good football play. But if you're the Bills, when you get a lead like that, you have to understand how to take the ball out of your quarterback's hands. Don't call a double move on third and three. Mm -hmm. Kind of take some of the air. Psst, psst. Just take some of the air out of the yep. football and slowly win the game. They allowed the Rams to get back into the game. Now, to the Rams' credit, when that run game got going and the play action for Jared Goff started working, you can see the explosiveness of the Rams' offense. Two good football teams. Buffalo just happened to make the fewest mistakes today. You know, and the Rams would rather run it. They're kind of changing a little yes. bit what we've seen, but they, ha they can still do that yes. against yes. a good defense. Yes. Buffalo, I'm telling you, this is, this is exciting for the Bills because Josh will grow. There are going to be some bumps. But what he's thrown for, what, 1,100 yards right. or whatever it is in three, it's just – there are times at 28-10 or whatever, I don't mean run it, run it, run it, punt it, but maybe make a first down, and the next thing you know, there's six minutes left. There's six minutes gone, and we're down to 10 minutes. Let's game. stop trying to go for the home run and throw for 60 when we're up, when we're up 28-3. Very well said. Well, <laughs> and speaking of another team that uh, the Buffalo Bills can go 4-0 like mm. last year, well, cross country to Las Vegas, Buffalo. Josh Allen, he's <laughs> just, let's go. Let's, whatever we got in the playbook, let him throw it. Cole Beasley, 11-yard touchdown, beautiful catch. Just a great throw, beautiful catch. Those two have a little chemistry going here as of late. So the Bills at this point lead 14-3. It's 14-6. Defense has forced the Raiders to kick field goals deep in their territory. Allen gets pressure on third and 10. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Really? Are you kidding me? What have we done, Stephon? Did what? He's shaking up right before the half. That's a, a oh 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 no, you didn't. He's got to stop making those plays. They're good enough where he doesn't have to make those crazy plays. I told you, I'm not trying to compare, but a little young Brett. You, know, <laughs> you like that one? Oh come on, now I live that one, and I'm living this one. So, Carr finds Jason Witten for 15 yards. Hey man, where they dig him up? At? Your partner. <laughs> Derek Carr, you know, that worked in the field. Why don't we hit the end zone? Witten, touchdown. Hey, hey, hey. They've cut it to 17-13. Allen working on his arm. I'm not coming out on the 15-yard line. Look at this play all the way around. Good protection. John Brown. I don't know why they didn't call it, but the, the throw and the catch was unbelievable. And the third quarter. He dropped down like the Baltimore's Oreo sidearm or Darren O'Day, a little sidearm, and dropped it in there. That's got to be a touchdown. I am surprised. Yes. John McDermott challenges another look at Stood. The Bills do punch it in. 23-16, but they missed the extra point. Carr. Darren Waller. Oh, it's a fumble. Josh Norman playing for the Bills. Where did they get him from? They well, got him off the milk carton. Josh see? Norman. <laughs> Josh Norman. They, they think they're going places. Let's get a little experience back there. This defense, boom, forcing turnovers. Leslie Frazier, Sean McDermott doing a nice job. Dan Allen. Think he has time? To Stephon Diggs. How you digs me now? 49 yards. They get turnovers. They go deep. A little shoving. Devin Singletary around the left. He's in. Two-yard touch on the Bills lead, 30-16. to 16. Fourth and one. Can the Bills defense make a stop? You know that Josh Jacobs is capable of... They make a stop. They were stout today, Bills defense. He stopped turnover on downs. Five and a half to go in the game. Raiders get another chance. Carr. Pressure. Fumble. Quentin Jefferson's going to fall on it. Raiders do score late, but the... The Buffalo Bills, ladies and gentlemen, are 4-0 as they were last year when they made the playoffs. The Bills win at 30-23. to They, you know what? They, they're they exciting to watch. And on this day, it was because you think that fourth quarter, the Rams mm -hmm. came all the way mm -hmm. back to take the lead. Their defense is, is falling over just when their offense looks good. On this day, that was the defense. Sean McDermott is a defensive coach. Right. They look like. The defense that may be going places. Playing com complimentary football. The offense doing just enough. That's where Josh Allen has to learn. You have a very good defense. Mm -hmm. You don't have to score 30 points every week. Make the plays that are there. And then this defense, as they continue to rush the passer, Ed Oliver, if, as he continues to take that next step, high draft pick inside, you know what they have back in linebacker. Milano, Edwards, those guys can play, hide, 
it's amazing what this defense can do. It was one of the top defenses in the league last mm -hmm. year, and dare I say, they're there. And when they turn the football over on, with their defense, they're going to be really tough to beat. Well, and these 4-0 starts, I mean, they did it in the Jim Kelly heydays yes. a couple times in the 90s. You know how that turned out, Super Bowl. They did it. Now, you didn't see him play, but I did. Jack Kep days in the old AFL when they won in 64 and 65. Mm. There's a long way to go, but there's excitement up in western New York, and they don't play New England until middle of the year and then almost toward the end of the year. <laughs> Speaking of teams uh, in New York, guess what? The Buffalo Bills, after two losses against two really good teams, Sean McDermott squad figuring, all right, we're playing the Jets, beat them opening day. But the Bills had their hands full. Jets' defense played really well. Terrell Basham forces Josh Allen fumble. John Franklin Myers, J-E-T-S, Jets ball. Nice job by, look at him doing the Pee Wee Herman, boom. Nice yeah. job by Basham <laughs> yeah. getting the ball. Now, LaMichael P. Ryan, the royalty from Rose Hill from Florida. <laughs> How about that? Oh. If the Jets lead, did you hear me? The Jets lead. 10 nothing. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Dane Jackson makes a pick with the Jets up 10-3. Only the second game all year they've had a lead at any point. Mm. The other was the Denver game. 10-9 Jets, third quarter. Josh Allen for the youngster Zach Moss. 17 yards. Now second and four. Allen. Times. Plenty of time to throw. Other times the Jets pressured him a lot. That's Gabe Davis. And, but, but the Bills could never get in the end zone. Their rookie kicker, Tyler Bass, had six field goals. That's his fourth. They lead 12 to 10. Bills, their own 42. Allen, and you know, the Meadowlands turf. It got another one. Yeah. Tyler Croft. <laughs> I mean, it was a great play, but yeah. Uh, the turf must have jumped up. He would have loved to have that one. Get, his, get your name in the paper, son. Score a touchdown. Well, guess what? They kicked a field goal, 15-10. Under five to go, same score. Allen, Cole Beasley, he's a really good player. Without a doubt, and, and he helps them so much, especially Josh Allen in the underneath passing game. The rookie from Georgia Southern, Tyler Bass. Bass fishing in the Hudson? Mm. I know you can do it in Lake Erie. Mm. I don't know, in Lake Ontario, but you, in the Hudson? I guess so. It's another field goal. It's 18-10. And the Jets, oh, it's tipped. And the veteran, the long in the tooth, but still a force, 55. Yeah, you, you know him, Jerry, Jerry Hughes. Hughes. Just great awareness. Ball's in the air. There's a defensive lineman. We love to get our hands on the ball. Nice job by Jerry there. Beasley had 11 catches. That's a career high. Look, Bills, they didn't get in the end zone. The Bass, there was six of eight on field goals. The Jets, I want to give them credit. They played much, much better football. Much better football. It's professional football. And Buffalo, I think, has got a, that huge playbook they've been operating under. Maybe shorten it just a little bit. That's my feel. Oh, just a little bit. A win is a win. We know that. But Buffalo, their offense has got to be more explosive. It's too methodical right now. they got to get the ball down the field. Yeah, I think they were so successful with all sorts of stuff. Just bring it in just a tap. A win is a win is a win. A top. The AFC's forever has stood New England. Oh, my goodness. The Buffalo Bills have lost 15 of 16 at home to the Patriots or to Bill Belichick, winning only in 2011 in their stadium. Windy as heck in the Ralph. Josh Allen and the Bills, would this be the day? Well, he runs for 19. The Bills are marching first quarter. A couple plays later, this youngster, the rookie, Zach Moss, he looked good. The offensive line looked good. 7-0 Buffalo. Bills' offensive line was outstanding all day. Zach Moss ran really hard, and his vision was great, boom. And Cam Newton, late first. Coming off a couple of rough games. Look, uh-oh. Sacked by Quentin Jefferson. New England offense yet to score a touchdown in the first quarter. Just didn't have a feel for what they wanted to do early on. Well, you know, it's only 7-6. Mm -hmm. Third quarter, Josh Allen. Little play action, looking deep now, looks under. These are things he didn't necessarily do as a rookie, right? A couple years ago, Stephon Diggs, a big 41-yard gain inside the five. And then here's that O-line and Moss. What? Literally, the offensive line bringing him into the end zone. Uh, 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 I'm in there. And the Patriots defense just not showing any toughness. You got to stand up and keep him out there. 75-yard drive, 14-6. to six. Damian Harris mm. been hurt. This young man ran hard. 22 yards, of course, a man named Damian around Halloween's going to have a good game. 14-12, and New England's going to go for two. 
And Cam is going to get it. It's Kobe Myers tied at 14. Now, they try to surprise onside kick. Didn't get it. So the Bills take over in plus territory. And Allen hands it to Devin Singletary. And this is the drive again. End of third. And it's going to go into the fourth. It was a gamble that they tried to catch him napping. But it didn't work. A short drive touchdown. Allen a touchdown. Great play call by offensive coordinator Brian Daybow. Empty out. Quarterback draw. Nice call. 21-14 Buffalo. Now, Harris, the boy. Second half especially. Bang! He just ran hard. North, south to the... To the nth degree, down to the 10. Patriots, Cam, you know, there were a couple collisions on this. He and Edmonds had a collision today that was interesting. So we're tied at 21. Now, Buffalo has kicked the field goal bass. The rookie makes it 24-21. Cam, under two to go. Uh-oh, they get into field goal range. Maybe good enough to win the game. Tick, 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 tick. 37 seconds to go. Newton, going to run left. They're going to get really deep. But Justin Zimmer, number 61, punches it out. Dean Marlowe falls on it for Buffalo. As a defensive lineman, this is great pursuit by Zimmer, not giving up on the play, coming down and giving a chop. Big play by him. It's been forever since they could say this in Buffalo, but I, you got to do it. No one circles the wagons <laughs> like the Buffalo Bills. It was dicey, but New England has lost four in a row to fall to two and five, and the Bills, like last year, begin at six and two uh certainly for new england a position they have not been in for a long time i still am, am jeopardizing this team's success because of my lackluster performances of protecting the football so you know coach trust me with the ball in my hands and i wouldn't want it any other way and i just got to do a better job of protecting it can you share sort of where your emotions were at How do you think we felt, Henry? Thanks. I played a few. Um, Love me tender. I had some uh, Frank Sinatra going on today. That's life. So um, some some good common music that, that kept me in it. That, that was one of them. But our mindset, obviously, was just going one to know. I mean, since Coach Belichick took over the Patriots in 2000, record until today against Buffalo, both places. 35 and 5. Uh, in Buffalo, 18 and 2. You know as well as anybody, but in sports, when you haven't done something, mm-hmm. we got yes. a long way to go. Yes. It's first you know, few days in November here. But when you haven't done something, it, it's not very easy. Buffalo, that's why it was so dicey at the end, but they got over the hurdle at least this game. Boom, it's huge. When I was in Tampa, we couldn't get over the Philadelphia Eagle hump. Mm-hmm. We kept trying and trying, and then finally when we got over, we went to the Super Bowl. The Bills, it, it's been mental for them. And on a day like today where it was windy, the weather was nasty, you couldn't really throw the football down the field, the more physically tough and mentally tough team won. And that was the Buffalo Bills. Their defense, they, they, it bent a little bit, but it didn't break, and they ran the football aggressively, more physical, and the defense made just enough stops. This was a big psychological win for the Bills because... Oh. If you want to win the AFC East, at some point you got to beat the New England Patriots. And they did it today, and I think this is going to go a long way for this team. Well, the Patriots certainly aren't throwing in the white flag uh, at, at two and five. But the, it, let's, let's say this on New England. A long way to go. I'm not speaking for them at all. But I think, because it's really easy to say, Tom Brady, Bucks, first place, look great. Mm-hmm. Tom looks, I don't think anybody's surprised that Tom looks really good this year. And the Bucks are a better team right now overall than New England. I think this is going to be the roughest look for Boston and New England fans. You have to judge it in two or three years. Now, how does Tom play next year? Look, he may win two Super Bowls with Tampa. I don't know. Right now, the optics aren't great. But I don't think if you really think about it, Booger, that anyone's surprised Tom doesn't look great. And given what New England's having to do, and whoever their quarterback will be moving forward in a year or two, I don't think we're that surprised, except two and five does jump out. Nobody's surprised, but it just looks bad in New England right now because they're so limited offensively. And if Cam, if Cam doesn't carry the entire offense, man, it, it's, it's just tough. tough to watch coming from a year removed from Brady where he took basically the same guys and he spread the ball mm-hmm. around. Cam can't do that right now. Nope. Plus, you got some guys opt out with COVID. It's just a tough look for the Patriots right now. Tough look, but, uh, but uh, hey, for Buffalo, it's a look that they have not enjoyed. Oh, yeah. For a long time.
Hey, what? A good look? Right down. Well, I'll tell you what. The, the Bills learned who they were last week. Mm -hmm. They put away, finally, and it took the whole 60 minutes, the New England Patriots, their nemesis for two decades. You wondered, okay, they did it last week. But could they really circle the wagons against the Seattle Seahawks who score all those points? Here we go to the warmest November or December or January game ever in Buffalo Bills history. 69 degrees in November. Josh Allen goes, wait a minute, man. I thought I left California. That's where I grew up. Allen, after a big opening kickoff by Andre Roberts, Bills score right away. Isaiah McKenzie, he looked sharp out of the gates, Booger. Great play design by Brian Daybo, the offensive coordinator. He, the offensive, the offense, defense, special teams. Allen on play action to Devin Singletary. And this is the very next drive. The Seattle Seahawks on their heels. And Josh Allen. Zing! Tyler Croft, two drives, two touchdowns, 14 nothing. Just love how calm Josh Allen looks in the pocket this year, Boom. Everything was so well designed. Late in the first, Russell Wilson. He can do that to Tyler Lockett. So, Seahawks pick up 12. Now, fourth and one. First of all, you can't run because Jerry Hughes and company got him hemmed in. And you can't throw because it's going to be picked off by Jordan Poyer. Great on all levels of defense. Rarely ever see it. Russell Wilson getting impatient, forcing a football. And so, Bills kick a field goal off that interception. Now, Allen to Stephon Diggs. These guys were wide open all day, Booger. All day. Diggs, nine for 118. Same drive, first and goal. Allen, a little jumper mm. to Gabriel Davis. Mm. Banks it in off the glass, 24 to 7. Mm. Buffalo! <laughs> Now, third quarter, 24-10, Russell Wilson. Jerry Hughes, yeah, I know he's the vet, but he's playing some good ball. Fumble! Tredavious White picks it up, sets up a Bills field goal. Five sacks on the day, constant pressure Russell Wilson was under. Wilson looking for DK Metcalf, but, I mean, he is superhuman. We've seen it, 27-yard gain. Seattle trying to stay in the game, and they give it to the hot stacks of wax. DJ Dallas, four yard touchdown. As much as the Bills have totally outplayed the Seahawks, it's only 27 17. Third and 16. This play looked good the minute you saw it. Look at that little screen set up to John Brown. 33 yards on third and 16. Great play call. They caught him in man to man through the screen. Easy pickings there. And the very next play, it's Zach Moss. Now they're in the 34 to 20. Seahawk ball down 14. Wilson, uh-oh, looking for Metcalf, picked off by Jadavius White. The Bills put White on Metcalf. I know he caught seven for one away, but much of the game, they were flustered, returned to 28 yards. Now, Allen, look at Josh, first and goal, gets the block right there, into the end zone, touchdown, Buffalo. Looks like student body right, except the quarterback's carrying the football. That's quite a student body right there. And so, yes, it was, my goodness, the Buffalo Bills on every level were ready. They, it was as if, okay, we beat New England. Mm. Let's exhale, let's play some football. Mm -hmm. Seattle tried to score, but in the end, Sean McDermott's Bills are 7-2. and two. It's the first time they've been that record since 1993, uh, that was the last of the four Super Bowls and the four Super Bowl won. Coach McDermott. We just felt like uh, the right recipe, the right formula was to go to go at him through the air a little bit there. So, um, and I think I think you saw the, the fruits of that. These guys didn't even try to run the football today. You know, we didn't expect that to happen. We didn't think they would just totally abandon the running game and. Uh, um, we had a real nice plan if they were going to run it. I loved it personally, and I know our receivers loved it, but whatever whatever it takes to win is, is what we're willing to do, what I'm willing to do. Well, here is what I would say, and I actually was surprised at how easy it looked. Yeah. Uh, let's start with Buffalo, because at every level, special teams, we didn't even show it, opening kickoff to midfield. Every level, offense, defense, specials, they had a plan, and it worked to perfection. They're guys wide open, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Boom, it was a great plan. Offensively, you heard Pete say, I thought they were going to run the football. Mm -hmm. Out of the first 22 plays, they threw the football 20 times. They right. put the ball in Josh Allen's hands because they liked their matchup against that secondary. They realized that the pass rush wasn't going to be there. And defensively, the Buffalo Bills, they said, you know what? We're going to take away the big play. We're not going to allow yes. you to get the football down the field to D.K. Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. 
We're going to make Russell Wilson turn the football over. Four turnovers in the game, five sacks. So it was a nice game plan. And to your point, after New England Patriot week, it was almost as if they said, okay, we belong. Now let's go out and show the world the Buffalo Bills belong. Maybe their best game of the season. Well, it is, and they play with maturity. Yes. Even yes, better exactly. than September, yes. as good as they look. Yes. As for Seattle, Russell Wilson's got to cover up a lot of ills. And sometimes it's going to look not great. And by the way, they were forced to use the tight end a lot, mm. which I don't think was the game plan going in. But, and that's credit again to the Bills' defensive game plan. Seattle's got two faults. Their offensive line isn't very good, so Russell Wilson is forced to create, and everybody talks about let Russ cook, where he's got to cook behind that offensive line because they're not going to protect him. And the pass rush, I get it. We trade for Carlos Dunlap. We're going to blitz Jamal Adams. But you got to win the one-on-one -on -one rush. And so the offensive line and the pass defense wasn't very good. And Rush tries to cover up for it all, but it's tough for one guy to do that. The Bills, uh, the, uh, Allen was sacked seven times, but it's, he didn't throw the ball up for grabs. Exactly. Again, yes. Maturity. Yes. I, I'm, yes. wow. If you're a Buffalo fan, mm. you're like, whoa. Mm. Now here they go. And Seattle's got division games coming up with Rams and Arizona. Well, my game ball goes to Josh Allen, Buffalo Bills. He looked, in many ways, to me, better than his September when everyone was saying, hey, he's as good as anybody playing, because under control, running, throwing, not turning over, having fun. The Bills had a plan, and they, they played with such confidence. And we understand that he lost his, his beloved grandma over yeah. the weekend. Our condolences to all the Allen family. And he was thinking of her on this day, so how could we not give him uh, a game ball as the Buffalo Bills are a place they haven't been since, dare I say, the early 90s? I mean, they're really or that? Okay, I don't want to. I don't want to say any more than that. Yeah. All right, we nine and zero. Oh. Now, what a game this was! Buffalo at Arizona, five and three cards. Special K against Josh Allen, seven and two Bills in Arizona. Josh Allen, Isaiah McKenzie to Josh, and not only does he catch it, what makes the move? 7-3 Buffalo, great play call by Brian Dayball. Unbelievable, but what, what about the hands by Josh Allen? Catch it and then the move. He's just an athlete. <laughs> now we're early third quarter. Kenyon Drake gonna run it to it's a fumble! And Dane Jackson recovers. Buffalo with the ball. Buffalo leads 16-9. Allen, Cole Beasley. And it's a touchdown, and the Bills are up 23 to 9. Just beat Seattle. Now they're trying to win another game against the NFC West. Great route by Cole Beasley against Patrick Peterson. Special K. Mm. Put him in a bowl, add a little milk. You got breakfast! Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins. They would. Ugh, that's going to sound rough later on. 35 <laughs> yards. Later in the drive at the one, you're just not stopping that. Special K, boom. When I was young, I ate it with water, not milk. It was, you know what? Special K is good, just <laughs> even dry. 23 16. Allen's pass, third mm. quarter. Patrick Peterson, and we know what a return guy he is. Not only on picks, but with punts. He's trying it. He tried to make one of those returns, but they're at the 44. First play after the pick, Kyler Murray. Whoop. Man, he's, he's just mad. How are you going to stop that? 28 yards for a first down later in the drive. Murray, like the little water bugs we see in the summer, right? They didn't run him early in his career, boom, the first year. Now they're starting to unleash the quarterback run game, and it's been phenomenal. Ten rushing touchdowns already. First to do that in five years, Cam did it. 26-23 Arizona. Now, three minutes to go, Allen. Four yards, Beasley. First down on third and four. Look at the catch. Wow. Clutch. 40 seconds left. Second and one, Allen. Stephon Diggs. No one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. They take the lead with seconds left. Great throw. Unbelievable route by Stephon Diggs. Cook Patrick Peterson again. But the message didn't get to Arizona. 30 to 26 down with 11 seconds to go. Murray, they got him. No, they don't. They got him. He fires. What do you do? Knock it. Oh! Oh! DeAndre Hopkins between three Bills. Touchdown, Cardinals. Tom always said, knock it down, and oh. they didn't. Oh, man, but, but one, two, three. He's got some of the biggest hands in the NFL, DeAndre Hopkins. Triple X hands. That paid dividends. Look how high he is. His hands over all the defenders and makes a hand catch, boom. Unbelievable. My goodness gracious. Arizona gives up a touchdown with 30 seconds to go. 
and they come back and look, they've beaten the Seahawks, they've they've um, they've beaten the Bills. They can look on any day. I know Miami beat them a week ago, but they on any day they are this sort of dangerous as Buffalo found out the hard way. All, all I was thinking about for Kyler was just getting in the air, getting in the air. I honestly, I don't know how D Hop caught that. I'm so blessed that he's on our team. We got the W. It was ugly, but we got the W. Uh, it has to be the biggest one of his career, maybe. I don't know. He's phenomenal. You know, he. he I went out of that game last week, um, regretting we didn't get it to him in crunch time or tried to get it to him in crunch time more. Uh, we had a good talk this week, and I've never been a part of one of those, so still kind of at a loss for words, but um, what a phenomenal play. Hoppy made a lot of impressive catches over the years. Where is this one going to rank right now? Uh, this one is number one. It was the winning game, no question, against um, you know, uh, a playoff com- opponent. <laughs> Low key, huh? Low key after that. Arizona. And we're going to wait till we show you the, the Seattle Rams highlight before we put that in the picture. But yeah. Like, I mean, you knew Arizona was coming some, but Arizona and Miami, that game last week, two of Kyler Murray, like these teams are both, wow, they're opening eyes every week. Young quarterbacks that are being accurate and precise with the football and playing under pressure. That's the best thing you saw by Kyler Murray today, mm-hmm. using his legs, making yards, those hidden yards. We know he can throw the football. We know about D. Hopkins. But can you get the hidden yards? That's what the mobile quarterback is doing. We're seeing it with Tua, and we saw it today with Kyler Murray. They have to be better on defense, that being Arizona. If they are, boom, that NFC West, it, it is going to be dynamite. Th- those teams in there jockeying for position, you could have three make the playoffs this year. Very, especially with seven yeah, making. Yes, and, yes. And, and deservedly so. They all... Arizona next goes to Seattle Thursday. Mm. Side, that was the formula. Bill Belichick, Pete Carroll, they know what they're doing. Josh Allen, Buffalo Bills know what they're doing. Off a bye, off that Hail Murray, if you will, in Arizona. They're playing at home against the Chargers. Another beautiful day in November in Buffalo. My goodness, Dawson Knox almost gets bowled over by <laughs> <laughs> Josh Allen's throw. It's 7-0 Bills. Justin Herbert, boy, is he fun to watch. Austin Eckler just back. He had a big game, most notably receiving. Gain of 14. Third and goal, same drive. Herbert, bing! Keenan Allen, they got a lot of big game players. A lot of big name players, but how good is this young quarterback? Maybe the best in the draft. No disrespect, Joe Burrow. Well, they missed the extra point at 7 6 Buffalo. Devin Singletary, delayed handoff. And he bull- at, time the bill- at times, the Bills ran well today. First down deep in the Chargers' turf. Brian Dayball has opened up some interesting yes, pages yes. in the playbook. He's had a great year calling it. Allen and Cole Beasley have a great time pulling it off. That's Gabriel Davis wide open touchdown, 14 to 6. Good play call, great execution. That has to be a backwards pass first before you can throw a second pass down the field. Nice execution by the field. 14 6 Buffalo. Now it's 17 6 early third. Allen, now he can do this. Look at this play to hit the pylon. Right, talk about the wheel. 6'5", 245, I'll beat you to the corner. Now, Buffalo's up 24 to 6. Usually the Chargers are the ones uh, trying to come from way by, uh, trying to hold on to a big lead. But this is Joshua Kelly. Now, how can a guy named Kelly in Buffalo run for that and then jump over in the pile against the Bills? It's not right. It just doesn't seem right, but he did, <laughs> boom. <laughs> nice play by Joshua Kelly. Chargers going to go for two. And Herbert out of the gun. Huh. To Keenan Allen. The Chargers just keep bringing it despite 3 and 7. And Buffalo, this is the type of game you want to put away if you're going to win a division. And by the way, Joey Bosa was a monster. He's, monster! He's been a monster all season. He helped the Buffalo Bills almost blow an 18 point lead. Three sacks, fumble recovery, and uh, tackle for losses had six of them. Herb- uh oh, Tredavious White makes a pick. Buffalo ball, but. What happens? Up 24-17, Singletary. It's a nice run. He kind of waited a little bit, mm-hmm. didn't he, Booker, for the whole 24 yards? In a field goal range, Tyler Bass, their rookie kicker from Georgia Southern, and it's good, and they go up by 10. Now, the Chargers had the ball, but no timeouts, and they're trying to get deep, and it, 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 but by the time they could do anything, that it's just about done on the clock, and so Sean McDermott, He's the coach under Andy Reid, who's now, what, 19-3 and three after mm-hmm. a bye? Sean is 4-0 and oh after a bye as the Buffalo Bills are 8-3. and three. 
and remain in charge of the AFC East, Coach McDermott. If I'm laying on the ground, you know, one of these days, don't know why. <laughs> don't know why. <laughs> okay. you, you'll know. You'll know why. <laughs> <laughs> Thank it would you. be nice. Vic, it would be nice. I know. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> I came to Buffalo with a full head of hair. I had a full head of hair when I met you guys, right? I mean, listen, I don't think there's anything wrong with guys that don't have hair. It was a nice Thanksgiving haircut. Absolutely. Again, we try to keep what we have. So for <laughs> Buffalo, look, they're eight and three. You don't need to apologize. These are the kind of games getting a, you want to really somehow put away. They, they, they let the Chargers get within a touch. At times, they look very good. Klein had 14 tackles mm-hmm. for him. Defensively, First two and a half quarters. Yes. Again, I thought really good signs for Buffalo. If you great. remember this Buffalo team at the end of last season, their defense was outstanding. Mm-hmm. It really carried them as a young quarterback. Josh Allen was maturing. And for the first two and a half quarters, we saw that. Here's the issue. When they get these big leads, it's like against the Rams and today against this team, they got to be able to run the ball. Not when, they, not when they want to, but run the ball when they have to. Right. In that situation, you want to run the football, bleed some clock. They weren't necessarily able to do that. But as long as this defense peaks at the right time, this young quarterback, Josh Allen, has superstar potential. He's not there yet, but he's close, Boom. No, Josh, and, he, and they love him. Yeah. I mean, they, they, he you, fits you, in Buffalo. Oh, my goodness. He, and he's, you can make a lot of things happen. You know, another team. That we began the show uh, talking about all the AFC teams with the winning record, and certainly that would go into the Sunday night game and the Monday game as well. But the Sunday night game between Pittsburgh Steelers have lost only once. And the circling the wagons, Buffalo Bills will look good. <laughs> you don't think Scott Van Pelt is ready yeah. to rumble with these highlights, Scotty? Couldn't ask for a whole lot more on this one, Boomer. You're talking about division leaders, playoff implications. The only thing missing, and it would have added to the mayhem of this night, Bills Mafia. Wish they could have been in the building. He got everything, including snow in Buffalo, Josh Allen and the Bills. And the All Reds taking on Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers off their first loss. Wonder about the Steelers having to play Wednesday, having to play Tuesday, and now having to play this tough one on the road. And you have to wonder about Deontay Johnson. He, he can't hang on to the ball. He had two early drops, got benched for the remainder of the first half. He's got 11 drops on the season. Here, Dawson Knox has got it. I don't know if this would have been a fumble or an interception, but either way, the ball comes out. It never hits the ground. Cameron Sutton's got it for Pittsburgh. And in this scoreless game, the Steelers' defense gives the offense plus territory. Can they make it count? Roethlisberg. Quick drop. Fires to James Washington. 19-yard touchdown. Steelers lead 7-0. Next Buffalo drive. Tyson Alu-Alu. There with the strip. Mitch Morris is able to fall on it for the Bills. But the Steelers can't turn him over, but they record a sack in their 70th consecutive regular season game, which is the longest streak in the history of the NFL. Bills got a field goal. Pittsburgh's got time. Ben Roethlisberger, a two-minute drill pro, but this throw to Juju Smith-Schuster doesn't have a ton on it. It gets picked by Teron Johnson. First pick six for Ben in nearly two years. So the Bills have got the lead heading into the half, and they come out firing in the second half, particularly to Stephon Diggs. Allen finds Diggs two plays later. Allen finds Diggs. Defender slips, and Diggs, who's got speed, takes advantage, gets into the end zone. The lead grows to nine. After a three and out for Pittsburgh, Allen digs again. Diggs had 10 catches, 130 yards, and a touchdown. Later in the drive, Allen underneath the Beasley. No, a little flinch to him, but he goes up top to Gabriel Davis. Allen, 8 of 8, 104 yards, two touchdowns in the first two drives of the second half. Fourth quarter, Pittsburgh trying to climb back in it. It's a two-score game. Johnson back on the field, able to grab that one. And then the Steelers run a pick play, and it works. Smith-Schuster scores. They get the two-point conversion, so it's an eight-point game. Buffalo would get a field goal, and now Roethlisberger's got Washington streaking deep, but he underthrows it. Levi Washington, Wallace, I beg your pardon. Wallace makes the great pick over Washington, and you see it hangs just enough for Wallace to make the play. That Bills defense celebrating on the sidelines. Again, wish the 
stadium would have been filled with those passionate Bills fans because there would have been plenty to cheer about on the night. They give the Steelers their second consecutive loss and move to 10-3. and three. They head to mile high, do the Bills next week. Monday night football will be Pittsburgh at Cincinnati, a team they have already trounced at home, looking to get back to their winning ways and trying to find some rhythm on offense. Ben Roethlisberger saying the offense just isn't good right now. Performance of the Saturday, yes, no one has circled the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. They had not circled the division championship since 1995. Mm, I was in high you school. Were, you were in high school, and I was <laughs> circling them with them. Josh <laughs> Allen, Jake Kumaro, they were in Denver, 21-7. They had three touchdowns called back on penalties, by the way. Josh Allen, he throws, he runs, he sees, he feels, he's at 4,000 yards, and... You know what? Sky is the limit for the way they are playing offense. And when they landed at Buffalo at 2 in the morning, pandemic, not exactly toasty outside. There the fans were to greet the Bills and a great, great seed in Buffalo who have won their first division crown in 25 years. As we speak, Boog, uh, there are a couple games left in, in Week 15, but the most impressive performance... I understand the Chiefs keep winning, was the Bills that we just saw because the defense, which had been the calling card up until this year, that's now starting to be, in my eyes, a top 12 or 10 level D. And they won't be statistically at the end of the year. And the offense speaks for itself. They, they're playing with confidence we haven't seen for a long time. Well, you, you talk about that swagger. That's the swagger they had at the end of last year that, that they got into the postseason on. But th this young quarterback, the confidence he's playing with, when they faced the Chiefs earlier in the season, he had probably his worst game. He's mm -hmm. bounced back, and he's playing MVP-level football, and he's making plays off script like Mahomes does, like Rodgers does, like Wilson. When you have a quarterback like that, now your team can go to the next level because he can create offense that the coach doesn't have to call. Well, and he, he's let – I mean, this is a, a, um, a cliche, but the game is coming to him. Yeah, yeah. And it's his third year. Yes. I mean, it, right? I mean – the game is coming to him, and he and Dayball and, and Coach McDermott, Dayball, the offensive coordinator, Brian, they're just in sync. Mm -hmm. they, have a lot of, they have a lot of answers. Now, on Green Bay, real quick, let me run this by you. Could they win and get in? It's been a little while, but they're at Buffalo, who's playing for the number two seed. Kansas City, of course, is the one. Tua had to do it himself. No Woodstock because Fitzy... COVID, but the Bills had other ideas. It didn't matter if Dan Marino was a quarterback on this day, I'm telling you. Although early on, Josh Allen, they're very mum on who would start. Josh Allen picked up by Byron Jones, and that's a wonderful play. That's an outstanding play. Not only jumping the route, but also getting two feet down. Great pick by Jones. I do a field goal three. I think Dolphins, maybe this would be their day. No. Second and five. Allen. Devin Singletary. The reason we show you a six-yard pass. Drew Bledsoe's team passing record for yards. By the boards, congratulations. Josh Allen has that. I'll get you the numbers in a moment when we finish up. Now, you know what was big today? Of course, Beasley's hurt. Isaiah McKenzie, one of the McKenzie brothers. Seven-yard touchdown from Allen. 7-3. And now, McKenzie down the field, 19-yard gain. And then, you know, he's thrown touchdown passes to 13 different players. Mm -hmm. McKenzie gets, I think he has time. How about that throw? Like, it didn't get unreal. That's why they can beat anybody. The maturation of Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs said, you know what? I'm flossing. I'm flossing because we're going to be the second seed and we're going to have a big smile. Now, McKenzie <laughs> on a punt. And you, you know the McKenzie brothers? Rick Moranis, Dave Thomas. Take off, you hoser. He <laughs> is gone. Circling wagons, taking off. McKenzie. Second player in NFL history with two receiving touchdowns and a return, punt return touchdown in the first half since Hall of Famer Tommy McDonald, 1959. Mm. Allen, John Brown, he's back. Oh, him too? Yeah, they got some six. weapons now. By the way, it's only halftime. Tua had trouble throwing far, and even some of the – Josh Norman – Dusted off the cobwebs, he's in. What milk card did they get Josh Norman off of? Hey, bro? look at him. He, he's going to play a factor. He will. They got a good defensive backfield. Yeah, really good, good play. Receiver fell down and Norman capitalized. Tua, this was not the day. I mean, it kept going on. 
Matt Barkley played second half. Bills kept pouring it on. The most points they've had since 1966. 56 to 26. The Bills are your second seed. They have won 9 of 10. They are 13 and 3. Josh Allen's totals 4,544 yards. I mean, it just secured us a spot in the playoffs. Uh, this is this is where you got to turn it on, and this is where you got to start winning games in the playoffs. Otherwise, it really doesn't mean anything in, in the regular season. So we understand that. We understand that. Uh, we got to go put our best foot forward. Whoever we play next week, we know we're here in Buffalo, uh, and that's that's all we can focus on. Control what we can control, and like I said, go try to execute a game plan. And the emotions, but not just me, but you know, a lot of the guys in the locker room. It, it's it's a bitter taste in our mouth. That's you know, that's not a way we wanted to to go down. We move on to Orchard Park, New York, because the Buffalo Bills, for the first time in, well, a long time, how about a quarter of a century? That would be 1995, they were at home and won a playoff game. 1996 was the last time they had a playoff game there. So it was such a rich history in the early 90s, especially, and the game that no one will forget, the greatest comeback of all time, and that was Frank Reich in 1992, the wild card game, trailing Houston 35 to three. Jim Kelly, of course, couldn't play because he was hurt. Down 35 three in the second half. Don Beebe, Andre Reed, they were all catching him. The Bills came from behind. They ended up winning in overtime. They got an onside kick. I mean, the, every you could not imagine Warren Moon, Hall of Famer, Houston, the Oilers, Frank Reich. He was all Reich, and guess who was back? On this day, maybe Bills fans are hoping, no, don't. We love you, Frank. Don't do it to us. He's coaching the Indianapolis Colts. And Phillip Rivers, would this be the last time we'd see him? Would he beat Josh Allen? Well, Josh Allen early on, hey, Tim, that was the design run, but all of a sudden, Dawson Knox is there, and the 6,700 who are in there going, wow, this guy's done this all year. You're exactly right. Design run, but lineman not downfield. And so Josh just heads up play, finds Dawson Knox. Six completions to six different receivers early in the game. Bills lead 7-3 till Jonathan Taylor, the rookie, ran really well. Punched it in from one. It's 10-7 Indianapolis. Third and two, the Colts leading Rivers to Mo Alley Cox. And now they're in business deep down to the four. They ended up first and goal. Now on third and goal. The pitch to Taylor, but the Bills are there to stop it. And now fourth and goal from the four to about two minutes to go in the first half. Frank Reich decides we're going to go for it. And it's just a little far to Michael Pittman. I know we'll discuss it later. No problem with the gamble because what the heck? The Bills really had tough field position all day. This drive began at the four. How does Allen and Gabriel Davis do this? This is ridiculous, right? Yeah, just a great sense to escape outside the pocket and then the throw down the field because of the arm strength. Good job working the sideline by Davis. That one stands. And they looked at it, and it was a good replay call. They had another close but good replay call. And this is going to be a 96-yard drive, which Allen keeps himself. And so instead of trailing maybe by 10, the Bills are up 14-10 at the half. Phillip completed a third and six. He completed a third and five. But behind Pittman on third and seven, and now they bring in the fine rookie kicker, Rodrigo O'Darn. You've sunk my blank and ship. And doink. 33 yarder, no good. And the Bills, well, they take over on downs. Tough miss off the upright. Bills lead 17 10, early fourth quarter. Bills pick up the blitz. Allen out of the gun. <laughs> Another play to Stefan Diggs. Really? Really? Wow. 24 to 10. Now, Colts, as the Bills having fun, all of a sudden the Colts, they aren't scoring in like two, two and a half minutes. Long drive, Naheem Hines. Not the catch-up, but a great young runner, 29 yards, all the way down to Bills territory at the 46. Then, third and four, Rivers threw the ball really well on this day, Tim. That's Zach Pascal for a touchdown. Yeah, it was well protected. Pascal just running a little drag across, and he was able to find him. You're right, they were scoring quickly. So they're going for two down eight. I'm all right with it. Not the orthodox, but it's okay. But Taylor snuffed. And so it's a one-score game, but it's 24-16. Eight-point lead. 
Bills have kicked a field goal. Tyler Bass, longest field goal ever. Postseason by a rookie. He kicked a 54-yarder. Rivers to Jack Doyle. And what a game he had. 27-22. And Rivers goes to Doyle for the two-point conversion. Yeah, tight ends are big for the Colts on this day. Rivers finds Doyle again for the two-point in the back of the end zone. So, 27-24, Josh Allen. Can we run out the clock? Can we get another score? Allen. Gun. Uh oh. He, oh no. Don't tell me. Did he go out through the strip sack? The ball is loose. Darrell Williams, Johnny on the spot for the Bills, number 75. They lost 17, but they could punt rather than give Indianapolis the ball, but Rivers has a chance. 50 seconds left. Down by 327 24. Rivers. Haskell. Now he gets up to try to make something of it. And then Tredavious White. Jordan Poyer, I should say. Matt Milano, they strip. But what happens? They took a look, replay, even though mm, he might have been up and starting to run when the strip, the call that it was the Colts ball and the knee down stand. Now, John McDermott calls timeout, so this is a non-play. You know that Phillip is going, wait a minute. But McDermott called it just before the snap. And so then, a couple plays later, it's down to the last play of the game. Even at the Bills, don't say Hail Mary. They know what. Knock it down. They do it. Micah Hyde knocks it down. And the Buffalo Bills have won for the first time in postseason in 25 years. How sweet it is. And there's the youngster and the veteran. You don't think the Bills fans are emotional about this? Oh, my goodness. Each of the Bills fans in the 6700 said, we each one have to scream for 10 people. They tried their best. Tell you what, Frank Reich almost came in and authored another comeback. They wouldn't have liked that one. But the Bills win 27-24, and they will have another home game next week with Josh Allen at the controls. It was crazy. Um, I mean, for the team to or for, you know, fans to be allowed and experience that with this team. It would have been a shame if we couldn't do that. I don't really under, I, I don't think guys really understand the meaning and the impact of, you know, winning a playoff game for this franchise. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I think we're not in tune to that because we want to win more. You know, one's, one's not good enough for us. And we got to go find out a, a good way to put our best foot forward this week and try to go ex execute next week. I'm very grateful to, to get the win as a head coach, but, I'm, but I think I'm more happy for our team and our fans and, and Terry and Kim and, and uh, all the people that have you know, worked so hard even before we got here. A few too many self-inflicted wounds here and there, uh, but you're going up against a good football team. And so hats off to them. Uh, they played a good game, but at the end of the day, what I said to the guys in there, I'm awfully proud of our team. Well, you know, first of all, that was a really, really good football game. And not often that a seventh seed, mm -hmm. A, they're not normally in the playoffs, like ever. The seventh seed was 11-5, and five, Tim. So, but we'll get back to Indianapolis in a moment. Josh Allen, I mean, this wasn't news. I mean, there were a few plays that we couldn't show. Maybe you have, but flat-footed, winging it 30 yards, some of the other. <laughs> he, he's as fun to watch as anybody in the league. I know we have Patrick Mahomes and we have Aaron Rodgers, but wow. He feels, and the Bills feel he can do anything. Yeah, and he feels like when you watch him that he's in the same class because of some of the things he can do. As you said, boom, flat-footed. Just physically, he's so talented. But he also has got a great understanding, you know, about just kind of what the defense is trying to do and the problems that arise. Here, Kenny Moore is coming off the slot in the bottom. He blip, they blip their protection. Josh wants to throw this hot to Singletary. He's trying to get to him, but he doesn't have a throwing lane. So his ability to bring the football down, escape to his left outside the pocket, and then find Stephon Diggs for the first down on a second and 15 is a remarkable play. It seemed like he knew it as well. The reality is, is you can have the perfect play call defensively against him, but he's able to play kind of above the X's and O's. That's one of the things that makes this team pretty special. Well, let me – Come in here a little bit more with Buffalo. Look, Josh Allen wasn't born when they won that playoff game in 95, and neither were some of his teammates. Three years ago, he wasn't even on the Bills when the McDermott first time Bills made playoff in long time made the playoffs, lost to Jacksonville. 
A year ago, we know they led 16-0 Houston, lost uh, overtime. So it's only a couple losses for this group, but to knock down the door, to do it for the first time, I want to give the Colts full credit, but maybe that was part of, you can't exhale till you've done it once, and that part of the reason why this game was so tight. Now the door is open for the Bills. Do you see it that way, Tim? I do. Well, boom, I, I look at the emotion in the stands after the game. I, I think the heavy emotions, the fan base certainly is not lost on some of those players when you hear Josh talk after the game. Completely aware of what, you know, that city and organization have been through. And so, yeah, that was a big, you know, you know breakthrough moment. There's no question about it. And they did it on their quarterback's shoulders. Well, and look, real quick, and you can jump in in a minute, and then we'll go to what may be the end. Look, I had no problem with Frank Reich. People, oh, well, he shouldn't have gone for it. They could have been up 17-7, and the Bills, they had one drive that thus far, but they hadn't proven to be able to go the length of the field. I know it ended up backfiring real quick. You with me on that, or do you think Frank wants that decision back? He should have kicked a field goal at the end of the half. Well, I think Frank probably loves the call. Boom, I mean, you said it in the highlight. They got him open. I mean, they had Pittman open, and, you know, Phillip just misfired on it. And so I think when you look at that, it's easy to second guess now, but they had the right call and really should have come away with a touchdown. Well, and Phillip played a really good game. He threw the ball well, and after the game, um, quite emotional. It was, it was a heck of a heck of a team to be a part of. So um, certainly disappointing finish like this when you you just believe it's the year, you know. And I think that's that's a competitor in me. I've never not believed it was the year, but uh, it was a it was a special a special team to be a part of. Whatever God's will is for me and my family, if it's here uh, in Indy playing of the year, then we'll be here. And if it's not, I'll be on the sideline somewhere. I, I know where. I'll be on the sideline with the ball cap. Uh, coaching the heck out of a high school football team down in South Alabama. Look, he has done everything but get to and win a Super Bowl. Uh, I know there are others in that, you know, Eli and Ben in that class, et cetera. But Philip Rivers, Tim, and you played the position. You can speak better to it than me. But you can't root for Philip Rivers. You can't root for anybody. Um, one leg in that championship game in 07 at New England for San Diego. 37 and a half miles he's thrown in the National Football League. And um, his fire, game one, and if this is the last game, still apparent on this day. I had chills listening to him talk there, Boom, with those emotions. That's how you're supposed to compete. That's how fans of your team want you to compete. And I think it's clear whether, as you said, you know, playing on a torn ACL or just, a, you know, any random week six, of, you know, of a season. That's how he played. And, I know I have a lot of appreciation for, for what he was able to accomplish if that was the end. Fifth all-time uh, regular season touchdown passes and, uh, and yards. I mean, we could go on and on and on and among the, the best ever w with fire. Well, now, speaking of fire, but this is going to be firing up defense. Let's not hesitate anymore. You know what? We all knew that in the AFC game between the Baltimore Ravens and the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo that, look, We've got Lamar Jackson, last year's MVP. You got Josh Allen, the quarterback for the Bills, who is close to MVP this year. We'll see how it turns out. We got two teams that last week won playoff games and slipped proverbial monkeys off their back. They were going to play loose. Yeah, it was cold. Yeah, it was night at Buffalo. Yeah, it was a little bit windy. But you know what? There's no question this was going to be an offensive firework game. <laughs> That's why they play the games. Here we go from Orchard Park, New York. Did I say everyone knows it's windy? The association, I'm dating myself. Tell you what, some fans in again, and they were ready to see Josh Allen against Lamar Jackson. Who's going to light it up? Now, the Ravens came out running well, picked up several first downs, but then Levi Wallace, Bill's defense of Leslie Frazier, and head coach Sean McDermott, stops the Ravens, but automatic Justin Tucker. Doink! He's not automatic. The win, we're going to talk about it. Who knows what Tucker goes, really? 41-yard field goal, no good. First under 50-yard field goal he's missed in his playoff career. Sam Cook, been around 15, 16 years. Ravens must have been into the win because Sam Cook, it was not just another Saturday night, and I ain't got nobody. 
I got the money, but I just got the, never mind. 23 yard punt. Allen. The Ravens bring it. Justin Matubike. Kinda hits him, Tim. Eh, kinda. That's a little late, but it's the flop that gets the flag. And good acting by Josh Allen. Oh, he, he, he got it, got him. Now, third and nine from the 10. Ooh, good coverage by Humphrey on Gabriel Davis. What? It is tight coverage. Davis probably can't pull that one in. So, the Bills end up with a field goal by the rookie Tyler Bass, 3 0. Last seconds of the first quarter. Allen to Stefan Diggs and overthrow by like eight yards. By a lot. He doesn't miss Diggs often. That has to be with the win. The Bills did not rush the ball at all in the first quarter. Did you hear me? At all. Everything passing. Now, Lamar Jackson. He can do this and find the youngster, J.K. Dobbins. He can do that. Escapes a tackle. 31-yard pickup. Ravens now on the move. And you know that Justin Tucker is not going to do this twice. 46 yards. You see the win. It's, wait a minute. Doink off the other upright. First time in any game. Tucker's career that he had multiple missed field goals of under 50. Aren't we just never seen it? Under a minute to go in the first half. Ravens rolling. Lamar Jackson, Hollywood Brown. Go backward, go forward. It's a 30-yard game. All the more moving. Eight seconds left. Tucker comes out. Well, this is going to be right down the middle. Well, you know that. And it is e e e just in there. But we're tied at three. That's 34. Yeah, three, three and a half. The Bills had one scramble by Allen. That was their only run. However, Tim, a design running play in the third quarter. Devin Singletary. What, what are we not? <laughs> Surprise them. <laughs> Later in the drive, but still, I think it was seven passes, four runs on this drive. Allen digs the leading receiver in the NFL, 20 yards. How you digs me now? First down. Next play. They'll never expect a run. Especially in the wind. You can't run in the wind. First down, Buffalo. And they move the chains. Now, wait a minute. Three Bills on the left, two Ravens. What's wrong? If you're Buffalo, nothing wrong. Throw it to the back guy. Digs it to touchdown. Tim, what happened? Yeah, Baltimore just doesn't align correctly. You're right. Three over two. That's an easy decision. Josh Allen gets it to him as fast as he can. And so we have a touchdown. It's 10 to 3. Third and 13, Ravens, Jackson, running. And that's a clutch 17-yard run. Now third and goal from the nine, Baltimore. But just when they're going to tie the game, yuck, yuck, yuck. Teron Johnson in the end zone. He could go. Well, Lamar's going to catch him. No, wait a minute. He could go all the way. 101 yards. Tying the playoff record for longest ever, 1993 George Ice Teague, Green Bay. Wow. And then, oh boy. Whoop! And Lamar throws it from the two as close to his safety. It's intentional grounding, and he's in concussion protocol all at once, Tim. Yeah, just gets drilled trying to throw the football away. Head hits the ground hard. Looked like he was unhappy that he was going to protocol, but it's the right thing to do. Tyler Huntley, rookie, Utah, practice squad much of the year, comes in in a brutal spot. And you know what? He had Brown. Oh, is that with the win? I, I guess. Ooh. Ooh. Five minutes to go in the game. I got to say, Tim Huntley got him moving. He had a really nice run. And, I mean, he's not expecting to play in this thing. Throws it to Brown. He, the kid showed some poise, huh? Moving the football team at this point off the bench in that spot. Big third down conversion. Fourth and goal. A post pattern. Literally. Mark Andrews. Ooh. Can't make the leaping grab. Yeah, had his hands on him. Would have had his feet in bounds. But that defense of Buffalo swarming him in the end zone. Who would have thought? Well, look, the Bills, celebration. They're going to the AFC Championship game. Who would have thought in a game between the Bills 
and the Ravens, there would be two touchdowns, one on offense, one on defense. Who would have thought that the Bills would have no designed running plays in the first half and they would win? And who would have thought that the Baltimore Ravens, who ran for some yards, but many of the drives kind of got stalled. Interesting tactics as the Bills come away with the victory at home. Um, I'm going to pat myself on the back. You know, in practice, I go, go behind him and I try to punch the ball out. Uh, so Taryn had that extra sense to kind of look back and feel someone else coming and hold on to the ball and to finish the score. But uh, just an unbelievable play. Just one of those games, or one of those plays that that will be remembered for a really long time. Honestly, when the play happened, I didn't know what was going on. I seen the pick. Then he kind of slowed down, and then he just took off. Nobody knew what was going on. Then all we see is 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 the last name Johnson running down the field. I'm like, what the? I'm like, hey, let's go, let's go. And everybody was jumping, and I could barely see. I could barely see, and I'm trying to see, and it's just like, man, look, TJ just scored, man. Taryn Johnson just scored. <laughs> Maybe in the middle of the play, I felt like it was a big, play. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? just. Having the opportunity to take it all the way back, like I feel like that's what made it a, a more than just an interception. Just taking it all the way back and put points on the board. That was the biggest, the biggest accomplishment. I mean, look, a hundred one yard. So Tim, let, let's start by this. He's fourth round Weber State, 2018. He's the one late first half against Pittsburgh that changed that game around. The Bills were behind the Steelers. They ended up winning. I think it's been a few years since they had a pick six until then. Now they've had a few. So their defense, which they were known for until this year, is the one that picked up the slack. Not like we thought it would play out, is it? No, it's not what we thought. But you said it in the highlight, Boom, the job that Leslie Frazier's defense has done, and obviously Sean McDermott's fingerprints are all over that defense. You said it, they've been building it and building it for quite some time. It was really only this year where the offense caught up and uh, you know, the performance against a good Ravens team that came in hot was impressive. Well, and look, let, let's talk to a little strategy first. One side, Buffalo. I think the, the Ravens didn't blitz nearly any as much as they thought in the first half. But, and they also saw that, that, that last week Henry ran for 40 yards. Well, we can't do that. No, all passing on a windy day. Everyone was trying to outthink the other. And although, uh, although then we go to the third quarter where each team had good long drives until the end for the Ravens. So maybe... I don't know. You don't do that. I'm going to do this. Interesting chess match. <laughs> Interesting is probably a polite way to put it. I, I didn't like the plan at all for Buffalo. I did it. Maybe you're right. Running in the wind is difficult as well. Look, I think at some point you do need some balance, you know, just to help your offensive line so that you're not just getting teed off each and every single play. But look, I, I understand that you want the ball in your best player's hand, in their best player is Josh Allen, and their next best player is Stephon Diggs. And so I think they want to create as many of those opportunities as they can. They trust their quarterback. And so in that regard, it makes sense. But I do think some balance would serve them well. Well, I, I mean, look, they won the game, and they, they they just figured he could find guys against the non-blitz, and, and it certainly worked with the big drive in the third quarter. Now, Lamar Jackson had some chances, but maybe missed. Well, he did miss, right? He did. I, I thought he really struggled. Decision making in the running game and in the passing game. And in the run game, they run so many of these read plays. Here's one where the ball should be handed off. He gets stuck with it on an RPO. It's an 11 yard loss. Here's another one that should be handed to Dobbins. He keeps it and Murphy tackles him behind the line of scrimmage. And then obviously the decision in the red zone, an area he's been so good throughout his entire career, just doesn't see it. And, and you know, Tampa 2 coverage down in the red zone and throws the pick to Johnson that goes back for the score. Well, they, they outgain. I mean, that's not going to make them every happy on the flight, 340 to 220. Uh, they ran for 150 yards, but in the end, I mean, they, they get three points on the board, and unbelievable. Even Tucker uh, struggled in the win. Now, the Bills' defense, I just want to show this back-to-back -back sequence in the second quarter. I mean, it. I thought wherever Milano, 58, and Edmonds were making the tackles, 49, if they were way down the field, the Bills were in trouble. So you see him 
Well, that's a defense that's the same play. And then look at this. So he covered. He's my favorite player to watch with the Bills. I mean, he 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 gets to the backfield. He has a nose for the ball. They had a really good plan of gap control, I think, for most of the time. A lot of the Ravens running was like 60 yards on the very first drive. And they they had a very good plan for Lamar Jackson, who's not the greatest passer in the world. They were they had their plan together on defense. That you could see. Well, I think it's a great point. Those guys were all over the place. And a lot of times, you know, on a design pass play, you see Lamar take off. They were able to run him down, get good angles on him. And then, as you showed, do a good job covering ground in the passing game when we've seen guys like Mark Andrews really be productive for that Ravens offense. So I think in many ways they were the difference in terms of limiting what Baltimore could do offensively and clearly held them without a score. Now, look, Baltimore ended up winning those six in a row, and they're to be commended. But moving forward, and we don't know what Buffalo will host. That would be if Cleveland wins on Sunday or if they will go to Kansas City. But they're in the AFC Championship game for the first time since they beat Kansas City in 1993 with Joe Montana at quarterback. But one thing here, so the Bills won against the Colts, tight one, but a lot of offense. Now they win the other way. This can only be good things for them to win different ways in their pocket. Do you agree? Oh, I, I completely do. I, look, you need to be complimentary, and you need to be able to, when you know one side of the ball is struggling, have somebody else step up and make a play. Look, that's what good teams do. Even teams that have great offenses, sometimes you know they'll have a bad outing. And so I, there's got to be confidence that comes from that, especially you know when we could be seeing you know a matchup where they're going to need to make plays on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, and they won a game where Cole Beasley caught none. Who knows if he's really 100% or not, but they'll find out next week if another week will help him. So, again, they won with nothing Beasley. They won with one offensive touchdown, and they're moving to the AFC Championship game. And I can tell you that no one is disappointed in Buffalo, <laughs> however they won it. The Wagons, they circled interestingly, but they did it, and congrats to Baltimore for their late run. All right. The Bills have won 11 of 12. The only loss they've had since about, about two months was the Hail Mary. So you knew two hot teams, two capable offenses meeting at Arrowhead in the heartland. And here we go. AFC championship game. Oh, yeah, Arrowhead been around a long time. Three in a row AFC title games for Andy Reid's Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes warming up. The youngest quarterback to start three AFC Championship games. Bills have kicked an early field goal, so they've kept that momentum from home. The punt, and Miko Hartman can run fast, but you got to have the ball. It's a fumble. Taiwan Jones is on it. A special teams miscue, Chiefs key. Yeah, he, he spotted them this right there. They got six points on the possession right after this to give them a nine to nothing lead. Well, and here it is, oh my goodness, and then they walk over and say, relax, we're gonna need you in the game. But as you alluded to very quickly, given a three yard to the end zone, Josh Allen Dawson knocks touchdown. They missed the extra point, nine. Look at Mahomes over there with Harbin. We need you, nine, nothing. And to prove that he needed him, he hit him with a short pass first, then Travis Kelsey, a recurring team, down to the Buffalo 32. Fourth and one. Duh. Chiefs going to go for it. Duh. Pass to Darrell Williams. Keep, keep keeping the ball to Chiefs. The same thing that they did last week, boom, on that fourth and one to Tyreek Hill. This time they used the back out of the backfield. And now second quarter later in the drive, home to Hardman. See, we need you. We're not lying. They trail nine to seven. Way to keep him in the game. They would need him. Oh, the little trickery. It's Hardman again. We told you he's the roadrunner junior. Me, me. I know there's only one Tyree kill, but Hartman, 50 yards. Kelsey blocking. His speed does the rest. That, that is true, Boom. You got to have confidence in your playmakers and keep them engaged in the football game. That is what Andy Reid, Eric Bieniemy, along with Patrick Mahomes, was telling him on the sideline. So very much involved. And there's Williams, who ran so well last week up the middle six yards. So after down nine, nothing. Kansas City roaring back, it's 14-9. Three and out Bills. Third and six for Reed's Chiefs. Mahomes. Milano in. He's such a good. How does he make that throw to Kelsey for 11 yards He's in the first He's just the out? strength in the arm. You remember he played baseball, boom. So that twist of the arm is just a flick of the wrist. 
We've seen him do it time and time again. Waddle, such a good player, but the Bills had their hands full. Mahomes avoiding pressure. Mimi, this is the Roadrunner. Tyree Kill downfield, 33 yard gain. Now, first and goal. He's been injured for a few weeks. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, the running back that ran for so much in the regular season win in October for the Chiefs over the Bills. 21 unanswered points, 21 9, Kansas City. Three minutes left in the half. Josh Allen, time. T.J. Yeldon got a lot of time in the backfield, and he made his presence felt, Keith. He did, and Zach Moss was hurt for the Buffalo Bills, so here's a great throw by Josh Allen, staying alive along with T.J. Yeldon, a guy who they picked up and said, hey, he can catch the ball out of the backfield. He helped him out a little bit there, Boom. 21-9, Allen with 20 seconds to go in the half to Knox, but he's short of the end zone, fourth down, and I agree with this. Look, the, the momentum's been all Kansas City, John McDermott says, let's bring on the field goal team. Bash converts 21-12. Let's get some points at the end of the half. Now it's 24-12. Allen, Cole Beasley didn't catch any balls at all last week. He was leading receiver today for Buffalo. 23-yard gain. Third and three. The Chiefs did a pretty good job on the leading receiver in football. Did a very good job. Stephon Diggs, he had some numbers. But he was covered well all day, Keith. You know, he, he was covered well. And that's the one thing about a defense. If you can take away digs, then you have an opportunity to slow down Josh Allen in that explosive offense of Buffalo. Did you say slow down? Nobody's going to slow this guy down. Mahomes, hey. Hill, Poyer, he at least got a piece of him. I think Tyreek is going, really? Yeah, Somebody he couldn't caught believe me? it. Could not believe it, Boom. Well, but then there's this. You know, it's winter. You got to bring your shovel every now and then. That's some of the games. Shovel to Kelsey. Touchdown, Chiefs, 31 15. A little trickery again for the Kansas City Chiefs. That was one of two touchdowns for Travis Kelsey in the game. Now, fourth quarter, 31 15 still. Allen, you know, let's, it's still 16 points. And picked off Rashad Fenton. Some names you may not know, but they all contributed. The Chiefs had a great defensive plan. And Sean McDermott said, well, we're trying to make stuff happen, and it was off our hands. The, the one thing Josh Allen did there that I wish he could take back is trying to jam it in with three receivers hovering around, three DBs hovering around his receiver. But now off the pick, Mahomes to Kelsey. He would be wide open off the third and goal. Eric Bieniemy, please. He's head coach material, but not right now. He's staying right now. Nice play call. He was open. His concentration on getting to the Super Bowl, not a head coach. I now, agree. Boom. Now, three and a half to go. And then it gets Okafor with the tackle. Allen tosses ball. Deion Dawkins, you know, protecting his quarterback. Okafor to the ground. Everybody comes in. There are a lot of flags. It's flag day all of a sudden. It's not the United Nations. This is when the frustration sits in. You're getting beat up at the line of scrimmage. They're dominating you. You're not able to do anything. And Josh Hallett didn't like it, so he just flipped the ball in the face mask. Offsetting penalties. They went on to have another down and live to see another day. And so in the end, it's 38 to 24. The Chiefs defend the Lamar Hunt Trophy, the AFC Championship uh, Trophy in their own stadium. It's Kelsey and Coach Reed and family and the confetti and the fans, 17,000 that were there. And uh, the Chiefs are going back to the Super Bowl. Another huge game for Travis Kelsey. Now, uh, here we go. This is the numbers first. Patrick Mahomes, you see that? 325, 29 of 38, three touchdowns, no picks. Kelsey and Hill were unbelievable. Kelsey, 13 for a buck, 18. Hill, 9 for 172. You total it up over the two games last week, Cleveland. This week at Buffalo, it's approximately, what, 40 catches for these guys? Travis Kelsey, another 100-yard game. Arlington, good job right after the game with Kelsey as a, in record book, another 100-yard. Look, this is, and I know they've won almost every game, Key. I mean, going to uh, early October, uh, no, November, a year ago, the Chiefs, I think they've won every game but two. This was, for the first time in two months, 
60 minutes of Chiefs football. It's the first time they could exhale in the last three minutes of the game being up by more than a score. Well, you think break. about it, Boom, from the beginning of the season, they've gone wire to wire. A mm -hmm. lot of people picked them to go to the Super Bowl. They delivered on those goods. It looked a little bleak at times last week against the Cleveland Browns, especially when they lost Patrick Mahomes. You didn't know what would take place with Chad Henney, but he got the job done. They moved on now. Obviously, advance to the Super Bowl, and it'll be a hell of a game against the Buccaneers. You know, what was interesting here, and look, hey, you, you saw the game. When they met in October, it was a long time ago, and you can draw some things from early games, but not a ton. They ran it because the Bills were playing, you know, pass defense, and they didn't expect to run it that much, but they kept pounding it over 200 yards. This time, both of those receivers, you know, here again, combined 20-plus for a combined what? 250 yards, they're unstoppable, even though the Bills' defense has been getting better every week. As you look at Travis Kelsey, a key component to what they do offensively, but Tyreek Hill as well. Then when you talk about a tight end that can dominate at the level, he's like a wide receiver in a tight end body. He's very elusive. You see him with the shovel pass. You see him out there blocking on the perimeter. He's running shallow crosses. The wide open touchdown coming from the opposite side, boom, over on the other side and being spotted by Patrick Mahomes for an easy touchdown. So when you have that in your arsenal, you can pick and choose, whether it's Hartman, whether it's Tyreek Hill, or whether it's Travis, Kel Travis Kelsey. And remember, Sammy Watkins didn't even play in this game. Imagine when he comes back. You know, I know for a fact, you know I'm not just guessing, the Chiefs knew they had to play a strong game the way the Bills had been playing both sides of the ball, and I include special teams, which is where they gave them a touchdown. And it's almost as if, no, we're not toying with other teams, taking nothing away from the Clevelands or whatever, but we can't do that if we really want to go back. Their defense is sneaky. Look, no one's going to compare them to the 2,000 Baltimore Ravens on defense. But they're sneaky good. Do you agree? Yeah, they, they, they are sneaky good. And I think that when you, when you look at them, though, from an offensive standpoint, when you got Josh Allen, yes, Stephon Diggs is top receiver, one of the top receivers in the National Football League. But when you hold him to six catches for 77 yards, that's not a big get. Cole Beasley did his thing. But they've got to go out and look at it next year and go get another guy opposite of Stephon Diggs to move the chains. And, and, and I think when they do that, get Zach Moss back on the offensive side at the running back position, they'll have that nucleus together. They can make another strong run at a championship game. Here's the thing on Buffalo, and we can go to it now because we're going to have more to talk about the Chiefs. we got a full hour here. This Bills team, certainly they've been put together unbelievably, completely, building all three levels of it. Reminds me, I'm going to go back in history a little bit, when the Green Bay Packers with Brett Favre and Mike Holmgren started yes. advancing, they'd, they'd win one playoff game, and then they'd get the divisional round. Then in 95, look it up, they got to the championship game, first time at that level, and they ended up playing Dallas, uh, who, they, who beat them, and Dallas went on to win their third Super Bowl in four years. Buffalo just got to this level and played the Chiefs. This is the old-fashioned way of this. And I know you're always going to say nice things about teams at this point, but this is, they're going to get a big-time pass rusher next year. This is a team clearly and fun to watch, clearly just scratching at the surface of the upper echelon. I really believe that. That, that is true, but they got to look out for those other three teams within that division. Well, right? uh, Miami is going to try to do something. New England will try to retool, and then the Jets will still be trying to figure it out. As long as they keep their foot on the pedal, and I think the general manager, Brandon Beam, He's has great. done a hell of a job at putting this team together. And I mean, when you think about a young quarterback in Josh Allen, didn't have a big-time receiver two years ago. They went out and got Stephon Diggs to pair with him so he can develop, and now he's on the verge of becoming a real MVP in this league. Look, they circled a ton of wagons this year. This is a big wagon. They're in the heartland. It is a bigger wagon that you need to circle at this point because the Kansas Bills' great season, proud of you. Okay, we can say it. We're proud of you. The Kansas City Chiefs have a chance at the history books, of course, they're going to be battling history, but we're going to talk about the NFC in a moment. Teams that have repeated, and it's about one a decade, right? The 03 04 Patriots. We haven't had one since Bill Belichick and young Tom Brady did it. The Broncos, the last two years of John Elway, Mike Shanahan, the coach. 
course, the Cowboys, the young Cowboys, 92 and 93. The Niners in 88 and 89, Joe's number three and number four. The Steelers did it twice in the 70s. Needless to say, the Dolphins were perfect. And then the first two Super Bowls, the Green Bay Packers. So, I mean, it's a short list. It's an impressive list. And the Chiefs have a chance to join this list. Look, they can get caught up in the history books. They won't. But look what they have a chance to do. With everybody looking at them going into this year, who we pointed out earlier, you're the favorite. You're by far and away the favorite. You have Patrick Mahomes. You're doing this. You have Andy Reid. You've won. You're not. And they, they won almost every game. They, they did. And you take, you say almost every game. They lost the one game to the Raiders, a division team that kind of know them. And then when you look at the loss at the end of the season, I don't even count that. That doesn't matter, right? But it, they kept their foot on the pedal. They continued to mash away at everything. They didn't get sidetracked with Eric Bieniemy interviewing for jobs. They didn't allow that to get in the way. They just continued to do things. And Spags continued to get the defense going in the right direction. You've got to think that the Kansas City Chiefs are going to be around for a while, boom. I mean, you got to figure the next five to six years is going to really be special well, in Kansas City. Is it number 15, the quarterback? Yeah, that's what I'm well, saying. Well, then they will be well, around. Well, 15, Kelsey, Hill. They'll be around. I mean, Clyde Edwards. I mean, Andy you just – Andy Reid. Andy Reid. They're going to be around. Honey Badger. I mean, you just – they're going to be – there's going to be something special. Why? They haven't won the Super Bowl yet because – did you see that list? 